Hello, welcome to a fresh video on section 7.5 titled Properties of Logarithms. So in this section, we're going to pretty much pick up from where we left off from 7.4. So, um, and actually, that's a typo, not in the lesson, in the previous lesson. I apologize about that. I knew I was going to make a mistake somewhere, and right about it, I made a mistake. In the previous lesson, a new concept was introduced to you called logarithms. And we talked about the core relationship from that section, which is this right here. x equals b to the y is the same exact thing as saying log base b x equals y. So those are interchangeable equations. But in this section, we're going to look at properties of logarithms. And it's much in the same way that we looked at properties of exponents last semester. Or where you're in, when you're in Algebra 1, you learn about exponents, and then, of course, learn about the properties of exponents afterwards. Um, before we do that, though, uh, what I want to do is I want to look at a few logarithmic values and see how they are related. Uh, obviously, we're going to use a calculator to find the following logarithmic values and round to three decimal places. So here we have log 2, log 3, log 6, and log 9. So these are all common logs, so we can use the calculator. If you type in log 2 in your calculator, hopefully you get 0 0.301. If we put in, plug in log 3, we get 0.477. Log 6, we get 0.778. And finally log 9 we get 0.954. Now why are we doing this? What's the whole point? Well the whole point is so that we can discover the properties without me telling you. So that's kind of the, um, the end goal. So once you get to once you see the light at the end of the tunnel, it'll be pretty obvious what the properties are. But I don't want to tell you right away. I want you to be able to discover what they are by doing this exercise right here. So right below we have three questions. What if we add the values we got from log 2 and log 3? So log 2 was 0 0.301. Log 3 was 0 0.477. If I add those two numbers together, of course I get 0.778. Well, what do you know? It's the same thing as log 6. So that's interesting. That means that log 2 plus log 3 equals log 6. Alright. Let's get to the next question. What if we subtracted the values of log 6 and log 3? Now log 6 is 0 0.778. Log 3 is 0 0.477. Of course we get 0 0.301. So that's the same thing as log 2. So same thing as log 2. So again, log 6 minus log 3 had equal log 2. And there's one more thing we're going to look at. What about multiplying the value of log 3 by 2? Well, if I do 2 times log 3, I wind up getting 2 times 0.477, which will be 0.954. Oh, well, that's the same thing as log 9. Same thing as log 9. So 2 times log 3 had equaled log 9. So, what does all this mean? Well, if we think about it, we know that 2 times 3 equals 6. We know that 6 divided by 3 equals 2. And we know that 3 squared equals 9. So, what I could do 
is I can actually condense these two guys and s come up with a property for logs. So let's go down to the next page here. So again, log 3 plus log 2 equals log 6. And of course, 6 is 3 times 2. So what does this mean? This means that if I have two logs with the same base, it's going to be the same thing as a log of a product of those two numbers. So log 3 plus log 2 equals log 6. So whenever I have two logs of the same base, if I'm adding those two together, I can condense it as one log as long as I multiply x and y. Now why is this important? When we start solving logarithmic equations, it will be uh, easiest for s to solve those equations once we know the properties. And we can use those properties to help us solve that. And there's actually uh, several equations, especially word problems, that involve log logarithmic equations where we need to be able to condense. So that's the beauty about these properties, that we can take two logs and add together and condense into one log just as long as we multiply x and y together. Um, we also saw that log 6 minus log 2 equal log 3. Oops, sorry. Went the other way around. Log 6 minus log 3 equals log 2. Well, of course, 2 is the same thing as saying 6 divided by 3. So that takes us to the next property, which is the quotient property. So if I have two logs being subtracted together, as long as I have the same base, I can condense it as one log as long as I divide x and y. So that's another property. And then lastly, we saw that 2 times log 3 equals log 9. Well, 9 can be expressed as 3 squared. So that takes us to the power property, where if I take the log of a number raised to a power, I can take whatever exponent that is, put it to the left of the log, and have them multiply together. It'll be the same thing. So we see with the numbers that we chose here, or sorry, the log values and the numbers we got, we saw certain relationships, and it leads us to... Um, come up with these um, connections. There's another formula that's worthwhile to know regarding logs. That's a change of base formula. Um, if you have log base bx, it's the same thing as saying log x over log 9, where both of these are common logs. And remember, common logs have a base of 10. So you can actually evaluate any log you want if you only um, were able to uh, calculate common logs. Uh, before the new operating system for the calculators, that's what you had to use. You had to use um, the change of base formula if you wanted to evaluate some uh, different logs, like log base 2 of 8 or log base 4 of 64, stuff like that. Uh, when we meet again as a class, I'll show you um, how that formula came about. So lastly, uh, before I end this lesson, uh, it would be good for us to do a few examples. Um, in the course, you'll answer some questions in the Google Form, which uh, you'll see in our agenda. And of course, we'll do more practice when we uh, meet again, and there'll be a quiz at the end of class. So that will be actually, I think, uh, on Tuesday for A period, and then Wednesday for periods B, C, B, D, and F. So here are the examples. You're asked to expand each logarithmic expression below. This is from page 508 in the textbook. So here is the deal. We have a single log, and we see how 3 is being multiplied to x to the 4 power. Well, going back up, we see from the product property that if you have two logs being multiplied, or sorry, if you have two things being multiplied and there's a log connected to it, you can break it apart into two separate logs. So in this case, I can say log 3 plus log x4. And because I have an exponent, I can use the power property and write it like that. 
So that's how we would expand that problem. Pause the video, try to see if you can get B on your own, and then play the video and see what you get. Okay. So, in this case, that's like saying log base 6 of 5x cubed divided by y. So in this case, I can use a quotient property and then I can continue breaking this apart and then of course with the 3 is the exponent I can move that to the front. So that's how we expand those. And again, we'll have a chance to practice that in class. And then we'll see it again in 7.6 because we'll have to use these properties to solve logarithmic equations. Last, we're asked to condense. So condense means to make more compact, right? To make it shorter. And in fact, we want to condense each one, each expression to a single log. So here we see log 9 plus log plus 3 log 2 minus log 3. What I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the 3 back. That's using the power property right here. So the n can go back to get log base bx to the n power. So I have that minus log 3. And of course, that will be log 8. There's a plus in the middle, so I can combine it as 9 times 8 using the product property. Then, of course, I could do log 72 minus log 3. Now I can divide these two because I'm using the quotient property. So it'll be log of 24. And we can actually confirm this in the calculator. If I go to the calculator app that I have um, on my PC here. So, oops, not the right place. Let's see here. So log 9. So log 9 plus 3 log 2 plus... Ah, minus log 3 and if you do log 24 we get the same exact thing. So we know we did this right. Here we see ln. Who cares? As long as the bases are the same we can condense, expand, we can combine whatever we want to do as long as the bases are the same. And ln of course is log of base e. So ln 4 plus ln 3 cubed minus ln 12. ln 4 plus ln 27 minus ln 12. ln 108 minus ln 12. ln 108 over 12. That would be the natural log of 9. And again, if you were to compute that and compute this, you would see it would be the same. So this concludes the lesson on 7.5. Do answer the Google form. It's our first Google form of the year. Um, and then I'll see you guys uh, over the weekend. And uh, really quick, enjoy the weekend. These are my uh, predictions for the games this week, in case you're interested in uh, watching the games. So if I happen to get these right, you may not see me this weekend because I probably will just fly to Vegas and make a living there, <laughs> making football picks. Anyway, uh, again, have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.